George likes his chicken spicy. Spice up your life! Spicy, no? And this is the new spicy. Welcome back to Spice. I'm joined here by Robin. How are you? Hi, good, thanks. Excellent. What, what do you do, Robin? So I work here at Pilgrim Theological College yep. where I teach New Testament. Okay, so you are a biblical scholar? I am. Are you a theologian, Robin? Well, that term gets used in various ways. So, yes, broadly. Okay, great. But I mostly think of the Bible as the starting point for theology rather than abstract theology like some theologians. Okay. Excellent, there's a subtle dig at someone. I know, I know, they might <laughs> dispute that, edit this out. Yeah, no, that's fine, no, we'll keep rolling. Um, so today is part of our series on Bible studies and, and helping uh, young youth leaders prepare Bible studies and devotions. Right. And we've, we want to talk about the Bible itself. Mm -hmm. So you are more than qualified. I think so. What is it? What, when we say the Bible, what are we talking about? I feel like I should have one in my Yes, head. I know. Well, bad we don't have any pretend. props. Yeah. Um, so there's two ways to answer this question. The historical answer is the Bible is a collection of 66 books if you're a Protestant, and if you're in the United Church, you're a Protestant. Okay. Catholics have a few more. Um, 66 books, 39 in the Old Testament that were written mostly in Hebrew, that are also sometimes called the Hebrew Bible or the Jewish Bible, and then 27 in the New Testament that are the stories of Jesus and Jesus' followers, yep. um, and they were written in Greek. And that spans about a thousand years of humans thinking about their relationship with God, writing down their experiences of God, what it meant to be a people of faith both in Israel and then as the Christian community emerged. Yep. Now, you don't have to be a Christian to believe that. That's just some kind of basics. An atheist could agree with, probably, okay. that, that description. Right. So then there's a question about, as a, as a Christian, what is the Bible? Yep. And this is really a faith claim. And here we tend to use language like, as a Christian, I believe there is something about the Bible that makes it unique. It's uniquely inspired. It um, speaks in a particular way about God. It reveals something about God that no other book does in quite the same way, and that's particularly in pointing to Jesus Christ. Yep. Um, and, but that's a faith claim. I can't prove that. It's not scientific, but it's what I believe as a Christian, that this book, this collection of books, it's more like a library, really, yeah. speaks to us about God in a, in a really unusual and profound way. Okay, that, that's really helpful. I guess it might be interesting also to wonder, are there things that the Bible isn't? Yeah. Would it be helpful for us to be mindful of things that it's not? Yes, definitely. Um, I grew up around people who talk about the Bible as like a rule book or yeah, a yeah. manual, but it's not any of those things. Okay. So in that whole collection of 66 books, we have poetry, we have stories, some are more historical, some are more imaginative, we have dreams, we have letters. There's a whole range of kind of literature in there. So it's, it's not a rule book. You can't just take one phrase or one sentence and go, that is exactly how God speaks to me. We've got to do a bit more work. Yep. We've got to sort of um, take it as, I think of it as human experiences of making sense of God and telling their stories of, of their experience of God in a way that invites us into that conversation to think with them about God and how we experience God and what God might be saying to us that is both similar and continuing in that sort of tradition. Yeah, great. That's right. It's really cool. Preparing Bible studies mm. at youth group, and it's a it's a privilege. It's also a responsibility. Yeah, it is. And it is. and part of what we're trying to do here is is to equip our, each other to have a bit of confidence and a bit more knowledge to do that. So, do you have any advice for uh, the viewers when they're approaching the Bible? Say it's their turn, or they've been you know invited the opportunity. Do you have any advice to? Them? Yeah, I mean the first thing is do it. Okay. Like, yeah. read it. Sometimes we have so much respect for the Bible, it sits on yeah. a perfect shelf or something. You know, many people talk about family Bibles that were never really opened. I mean, we're supposed to interact with this text. So, give it a go. Um, the second thing is to think, if you're leading a devotional Bible study, it's not about you having the answers. Yeah. Even as a biblical scholar and someone who teaches, there are many, many times I don't have the answers. I keep studying this book because it keeps bringing me back in because I haven't figured it out yet. 
Okay. Um, so I think reading the Bible is about opening it up. It's about asking questions. It's about acknowledging that we might not understand everything going in, on in there, but it's a way to have a conversation about God and think about how God might be speaking with us. Yeah. Um, if, if I hear the history of it and, and, how, and the invitation, it's almost like I can't break it by having a go. No, that's right. So yeah. um, I sometimes find this with students in class. People are scared to ask certain questions of the Bible or we're, we're worried we'll say the wrong thing. So, I mean, the, one of the best things you could do as a Bible study or devotion leader in youth group is to kind of create a space where people feel like it's okay to just ask the honest question. Yeah. You know, whatever comes to them. Um, we, you know, what I sometimes say to students is I don't think there's a question we can ask of God that God hasn't already thought of. Yeah. Like, you know, God's kind of a lot bigger than we give God credit for. We can't break God and we can't break the Bible. Um, you know. And... The, the other thing I would say is, um, we'll, we'll put some perhaps links below. Yep. Sometimes it's not about having, well it's definitely not about knowing the whole history or being able to read Greek or Hebrew, although come and learn Greek or Hebrew if you want. Um, but it's, it's about just having some basic questions to ask of any text. Yeah, and yeah, I'll, sure. I'll put an example below, but sometimes we can simply ask the same handful of questions of almost any biblical text. Okay as a way to just start a conversation. Yeah. Sometimes we take the Bible so seriously we also make that the end in itself. Um, and by that I mean we can almost make the Bible an idol. Yeah. But one of the things the Uniting Church um, really emphasises is that the Bible is about revealing Jesus to us. Yeah. It's about revealing God to us. So it's not about knowing the Bible for the sake of the Bible. It's about reading the Bible so we can know Jesus. And if that might take the pressure off people feeling yeah. like they've got to be experts. Thanks. Robin, thank you so much for adding Thanks. a bit of spice to our Bible studies. Pleasure. Thanks.